call this meeting to order. We please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we have the agenda before us. Do we have any additions, deletions, or corrections? In terms of trustees, Scott, update. Thank you.
And I also want to thank each of you for your public service on behalf of folks that live in Plain Township. Actually, thank you. Thank for, you. Thank yeah. you for Thanks. approaching, approaching yeah. us about coming. I wish more folks would be oh. engaged, but trust me, with us being recorded, it gets out on YouTube and we get quite a few folks viewing that way. So hopefully it'll help draw some additional awareness. Thank you so much. And you're always welcome to send us anything that you want us to post on our, our web page or social media or got a, a big presence there, so we, we're willing to share any information you may ever want to get out there. Thank you so much. Sure. Yeah. Would that be something you would, could you put something like that on a newsletter? Mm -hmm. well, yeah, if you have sure. anything that, you, if you have an article that you want sure. us to send in our um, monthly newsletter, we can do that. If you're quarterly. Quarterly, quarterly sorry. <laughs> like, so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. Them, yeah. And our quarterly, quarterly newsletter would be happy to do that also. Okay, so, well, thank you so yeah, much. Um, what would people be looking for? Let's say there's a family that just isn't going to say anything. So now you have neighbors on both sides across. What does what it, what's the telltale sign? What do you, what do you look for? Yeah, just uh, people that, um, that, that may be just segregated and, you know, mom, mom and dad might not know that there are additional supports for them. One of the biggest things we're running into right now is people needing respite. And that is the biggest thing, you know, and moms and dads are afraid to ask for help. Mm -hmm. And it's just literally to be able to go to the grocery store, to be able to have a night out for, for dinner, mm -hmm. and it's something that we easily provide. And it, it, wow. and it really helps yeah, I, with the knew? stress. I mean, that would yeah. be something helpful for us to get out to the community. So. I was just saying, we, would it be? Had no idea, so is yeah. Is there a way I mean, to approach you, our residents? To well, we could do it in our newsletter. If you send us something. Sure will. We have our, our summer newsletter coming up soon, so. Yeah. Yeah, and we provide uh, just financial support so they can uh, attend summer camps, um, you know, and any kind of adaptive needs that they may have, you know. Uh, you know so uh, we're here as a huge resource, and what we do is we try to meet people where they are. Ultimately, we want um, families to stay together, and a lot of times, just that simple respite really goes along. Wow. So, yeah, we've always had a very good partnership with your agency. Yeah. I mean, first of all, one of your facilities is yes. in our township, mm -hmm. uh, and then we also are heavily involved in the uh, run, the annual run, yeah. and it's more special. I mean, so uh, I mean, we're just that, that's kind of a, a passion with those guys. We started when I was fire chief, but they continued that on and um, just kind of make it a big deal to stay a part of that as well. So thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank, thank you. And for the time again, well, anything you. that you want us to help you with, I think getting the information out, we can do that. So uh, other than that, you're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, and that takes us to number two. Yeah, item number two is an announcement that um, Plain Township was awarded a 2019 mini grant through the Stark Classic Plain Joint Solid Waste District. This was a grant that would um, help us promote our e-waste recycling days that we have at the township. Um, it was actually um, Marilyn who applied for it. Um, as the executive assistant, she put this grant together and we were awarded it. It's allowing us to um, purchase signs um, so people know that we're here, where to go, the direction to go. Um, so just number one, proud of Maryland for taking that on, and number two, happy that we got that grant. Uh, it was a $500. Wow. And that is the end of new business. Right? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good job. I will, yes. Yeah. Um, that takes us to the fiscal officer's report. Mr. Wolf. Thank you. Fiscal officer number one is a request for resolution to authorize the payment of penny warrants in the amount of $99,326.62. So moved. Second's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Leon? Yes. 
This foster number two is a request for resolution to authorize payment of regular payroll in an amount not to exceed two hundred fifty thousand. I will move on. Fiscal officer number two. I second it. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Fiscal officer number three is request for resolution to authorize payment for the following medical claims. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Fiscal officer number four is the financial report for March. If anyone has questions, I'll be available after the meeting for those. Uh, fiscal officer number five is a request for resolution to authorize the following transfers. Now, so we'll move on fiscal officer five. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Sago? Yes. Fiscal officer number six is a request for re resolution that the form of amended section 125 premium only plan effective June 1, 2019 to May 31, 2020 presented at this meeting is hereby approved and adopted and the proper officers of the employer are hereby authorized and directed to execute and deliver to the administrator of the plan one or more counterparts of the plan. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Lamb? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Fiscal officer number seven is a request for resolution to authorize a refund as follows for overpayments for EMS services. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Fiscal officer number eight is a request for resolution to authorize the fiscal officer to pay vendor and utility bills and include them on the pending warrant list uh, of the April 23, 2019 regular meeting. I will move on. Fiscal officer number eight. I'll second it. Been moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. And that concludes the fiscal officer report. Next time, that takes us to the administrator, Ms. Camp. Thank you. Item number one is a resolution to pay the U.S. Postal Service for postage of the 2019 Plain Township Special Newsletter in an amount not to exceed $3,452.33 from fund 01A26J. I will move on administrator number one. I'll second. Been moved and seconded. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Lena? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Item number two is a resolution to approve and authorize payment to the Know Your Roots for cemetery site improvements at EB Cemetery and they not, not to exceed $4,790 from fund 01D09. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Yes. Um, the amount we kept right under $5,000 as I think it was a year ago um, um, in planning and implementing the funeral. Um, I've worked very closely with a very nice family who's, they were out of town. Joe helped with the funeral also. Um, their history of their family can be found right to the beginning of the cemetery. And uh, they made a very nice donation in the amount of $5,000 for any um, improvements to the cemetery. Um, so nice. we worked with um, Rob and Know Your Roots and came up with a plan that would enhance the cemetery Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Hawes? Yes. And that is the administrator report. Thank you. That takes us to Fire Chief Schaumburg. Thank you. Uh, item number one is a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees to grant a request for tuition reimbursement to Eric Wiedelbacher attached um, thereafter to authorize a payment not to exceed $607.50. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Okay. Item number two is a resolution to authorize purchase and payment and shipping for fire, 
fighter protective equipment and replacement of leather boots, fire gear, and miscellaneous from Fire Force Inc. Eagle Emergency in the amount not to exceed $56,000 per attached quotes to be taken from fund 10A09G. So second. It's been moved and seconded discussion. It's just all part of the 10 year replacement, isn't it? Yeah, to and cycle and those up one year and uh, it's the replacement again. Yeah. All right, anything else? Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Samo? Yes. Uh, yeah, item number three is a resolution to authorize the purchase and payment of one Ventry electrical, electric ventilation fan from QDCIP Fire for attached quote not to exceed $4,000 to be taken from fund 10A08. So moved. Second's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Samo? Yes. Last item is a um, resolution by Plain Township Board of Trustees to authorize payment to Stark State College for up to 11 firefighters to attend a Rope 2 technical rescue course in the amount not to exceed $5,500 to be taken from fund 10A, 15A. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Samo? Yes. And that concludes fire department. Thank you. That takes us to road. Mr. Icino. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Item number one is a resolution by the Board of Trustees to advertise for bids for the Plain Township 2019 paving and repair project. The newspaper published in Stark County on April 11th and April 18th in the repository with bids to be opened on April 25th at 1 30. So, uh, second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Uh, roll call. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Item number two is a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees to enter an agreement with Caplia Studio Architects to prepare the bidding package of the Air Department's new warehouse building, not to exceed $15,500. So moved. Uh, second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Um, sir. We, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had other other bids. Yes, as a part of this. Soul, Soul Harris was yeah. thirty some. Twenty six. Yeah, they were a lot higher. They're going to do both, right? They, they do the bid package, package, and then do they do any architectural work as well? Well, they do the survey. Yeah, just, yeah. You know, just, you know, a quick drawing, but not the actual building. Yeah, because we're looking at a like a prefab building. Yeah, it's already yeah. been and, designed. and the survey's yeah. not cheap because yeah. it's got to go through regional planning. Yep. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, anything else? Roll call. Mr. Sabo? Yes. yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Hawes? Yes. Item number three is a resolution to authorize the purchase and installation of a 2019 snow and ice truck package from Glen Hill Road Machinery. Not to exceed sixty thousand three hundred forty-five dollars and twenty-five cents. So moved. I'll second it. Been moved and seconded. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Oz. Yes. Mr. Lino. Yes. Mr. Samo. Yes. Item number four is a resolution to purchase a two thousand and twenty international dump truck chassis <coughs> from Cerny Motors for the O. Purchasing program, not with a 60-month, 100,000-mile warranty, not to exceed $89,296.22. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Haas. Yes. Mr. Lino. Yes. Mr. Samo. Yes. Item number five is an email I received today from a resident in Baker Creek, Hawaii. Discuss which way we want to uh, proceed or advice we want to give on this. Uh, it is a busy allotment right now because they're doing, they're adding a lot of streets and a lot of homes are being built on the back side of uh, Wicker Creek. And, uh, you know, 25 mile per hour is what I was working for. We're, we're I, never going to go. I guess, I guess I have a couple, a couple thoughts. First and foremost, you know, the request to uh, advocate for the change in the 
this. It's not. It's not going to happen. Yeah, and then based upon different but similar inquiries in the past that have went through ODOT and so forth, because ODOT has a say in whatever the legislature is doing. But I guess and this is frustrating to me, not just here, but in other areas in the township <coughs> as well. You know, they talk about folks parking on the street, kids out running between them. There's a couple things here. And I know it's easier said than done, and somebody's going to go, well, hey, you don't have kids. Well, I got nieces and nephews, and they spent plenty of time with me growing up. First and foremost, these people in these allotments park in your garages, in your driveways. Quit using the street as your primary means of transfer of parking. I get that it's, you know, if you have gas and stuff over it, it's not totally feasible all the time, but it should be the exception, not the norm. Two, is a parent with young children, they either stay in the backyard and play, or be the adult parent and do your parenting responsibility and be out there watching. From a safety 101, you just can't let these kids run around the street. I, I remember growing up, granted it's been some time, is a young side, not a small one. I mean, I would try to get my rear end tan if we were out in the front yard, let alone in the in the road. So, I mean, let's let's take some accountability exactly. as well from the parenting aspect. I mean, I think for the sake of responding here, I think you know, prefacing that the issues that to push ODOT ultimately has the final final say, even with whatever the legislature may. Um, inquire, but talking to your talking to your neighbors. If there's, I don't know, is there an HOA back there? Do we know? Uh, no. Wicker Creek. No. I, don't, I don't know. I don't, know. I don't you know. think I've ever seen anything. I don't. Yeah. Ask the folks to park park in their driveways and their garages instead of on on the street, and then be careful. Because to me, the flashing speed limit sign versus what a, a fixed. I just don't see the value. Body. And it, this first comes down to the basics of people being courteous, respectful, and <clears throat> being responsible above all else. So I mean, those are just some thoughts. Well, you know, it, I know, you yeah. know before we formulate the best response, you know, what you two would. Yeah. Do they have a homeowners? I, I they don't, don't know. So. Because I've never received if you look at this, people driving 30 miles an hour, it's people that live in the allotment. Exactly. So somehow they should get a letter out to the residents, or if they they probably should have a homeowners or have some type of meeting and say, look, everybody, we all live here. Let's slow down for the kids. I agree. Maybe maybe some will listen to that and say, yeah, I better slow down. But I, I got to tell you, it it's nuts out there anymore. The, I cannot believe the way people drive. It's getting. Worse. Everybody's These poor guys got their hands full. I don't know. They they are maniacs out there. I drive 90 miles a day and I cannot believe the speeders. And I still go down Westmoreland when I come home and they're ready to pass me and they're tailgating me. It's like people, it's 25 there. I may go just close to 30 if that. Trying to respect that a lot. They don't. I don't know how to deal with disrespectful people. I don't know what we can do for these people that are out of control. Disrespect, they're disrespecting a lot, especially if you're speeding a lot. What is wrong with you? And like Scott said, they shouldn't be playing out the street. Little kids, a parent should be out there watching their kids. You should be out the street. Is there anything outside the obvious that you guys have to say? Because I mean, this is, it seems like it's the same old thing. Yeah, same this, is, thing. this is historical because it's, ownership. It, it's been happening forever. People have the same complaint, and we kind of give the same uh, logic. And rationale. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's all right. We're constantly on our guys, traffic enforcement, traffic enforcement. Over 3,000 traffic stops last year. And the guys are out there doing this enforcement, but we're seeing the same thing that you guys are seeing. It's just, uh, and I don't know what the cause of it is. Is people's driving habits are horrible. That's that lot is still one way in, one way out, right? Yeah. 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 yeah there's no we're connecting streets, so. Whoever goes in and comes out is probably living there. Somehow they need to get a message to those people.
people say, look, slow it down. I got a couple options that we can, I could run by here. They have so many people that are interested in this, like she says in her email. We could, you know, they could take a petition and get no parking on one side of the road. As long as they understand that even if they have a graduation party at <coughs> Christmas I mean, and I mean, Easter or whatever party, they the, can't park there. And then we can put speed buggy out there for the sheriff who can, you know, do some more patrol. I mean, we always put speed buggy out there. You know, outside of that, speed bumps are an option. No. Electronic signs, so, I mean, I can put speed buggy out there for some time. Right now, the How, wide, how wide is the road there? Do we know? It's 24, inch, 24 feet wide with two feet of curve. So three cars? Why you, you can get two? Yeah, because uh, unfortunately, you're on a curb, curb. You can get three. You start stuffing everybody on one side, and there's a lot. Now, if you got two cars coming and that parking line is long, they're weak forever. Yeah, but now they're probably doing this. Well, I'm guaranteed they're doing that. That's just an option. I yeah. Mean, oh no, I, I know you're not. They're not going to want no parking on both sides. Yeah. Correct. That, doesn't that work. no yeah. parking. Talking to Lisa about it because we talked about it last week or a couple of weeks ago. She's right. Once you put those up, you come here for a graduation party or having a big party, you can't park on the other side of that street. Right. Well, we so that it, it, it that causes a problem, right? You should have really a huge problem cause to to put up no parking. Because once you start, then you gotta do it for the next day and yeah. the next day. And that, that becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. Is it enough problem cause? If the deputies, God forbid, went out there and there's been injuries in that, then maybe there's problem cause. But there's not, there's nothing there stating problem. Those See, we did put some no parking up there coming in because there's an island in the middle. Correct. Of well, yeah, we have we have done that yeah. three or four years ago. I, I'll just tell her we're gonna put the speed buggy out there right now. We'll see what kind of speeds we're getting. The sheriff can feel like speed because as we come well, out. as we as we know, speed, speed reports delineate the clear difference between what's perceived and what's actually going on. I'm sorry, Scott. Most of the time, it's the people that live there. I mean, that's you know, there are some a lot of builders going in and out. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of builders. I would wonder who could afford it unless they buy them themselves. Yeah, a lot of us would buy them. I just think the initial request to drop that from 25 to 20 no, is no, almost. Even if it, that's not going to do enough because no, they're still going to be still speed. And so it's now still the same people. Over, so they're still going to weave. That, that, yeah. All right, maybe just these get guys back can maybe go. Just, I, yeah. Okay. I'll tell them we talked and I'll <clears throat> tell them about sending a letter to the neighbors and saying please respect their neighborhood. I mean, we can put we can put something in the summer newsletter. Maybe the sheriff's office. If you want to talk to the sheriff, just a driving safely blur based on some of the complaints. From her. If you'll bring that back yeah. to the sheriff, that might be a good. Joe, you know, as you well know, because I mean, you brought that to us. You know. The state and everybody else absolutely frowns on signs that say children playing. Oh, yeah. And, you know, yeah, children that awesome. play it's because it's now that's just the, exactly. We have and so on. no, so even they say that's that that's not it a good gives alternative. The kids a false, you know, exactly. satisfaction that they are safe by being yes. out in the road. So. And I, I know we talked about. There be sidewalks. I can't remember if there's sidewalks. There. Oh, for some reason, I think they started, but I don't think they did. So. I don't think that one has. Yeah, so. so that's why. I mean, that's why people were walking their dogs and everything else within the street. That that would make sense because the first I thought there's sidewalks. Why are they even in the street? You know, that was only a street in the call set. I mean, that was it for the yeah. last time. Until Correct. Was yeah. No streets aren't even ours yet. So. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Thanks, Joe. Uh, nothing from zoning. Well, this will be the last so time. So far. Yeah. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy, enjoy this. Oh, yeah. We will. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that takes us two parts. Thank you. Item number one is just for discussion. Uh, to further discuss the idea of um, some painting over at Alpine Park in the North Block Ridge Road from Sarasota and Water. Met Joe and I out there. Um, what, Joe, a week and a half ago. <coughs> and uh, this is some of the ideas he came up with for um, the paving and some of the runoff of the paving to protect the storm water issue. Uh, Remember, the, the paving will only occur if we're applying for a grant. That's correct. The road and are for the paving. But he did come back with some ideas because the creek runs through there. And Joe, I'd be interested in seeing what you think would be the most feasible option for us. Well, I, 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 I'm 
honestly don't think gravel is an option because I think we're going to end up having a problem with it. And, but I, uh, you mentioned putting curb with cutouts, and I think that's something we can do with asphalt curb. So can you instead of concrete curb? Can you? get a new quote and he said they could be spread out further with right. maybe the concrete or that is it asked with the asphalt yeah, cuts right. and that way we can upgrade the grant but yeah I think Joe's right I think the gravel will be a maintenance headache but we do have to implement something um, I mean the goal is to have a handicap accessible parking lot because if you're in a wheelchair yes. or you have yes. mobility or vision issues nobody's parking over there right. and we have people who who have a difficult time running the shelter because of the far shelter because of the parking. And if we can get them from the parking to the shelter, then they're on the walking path, which gets them to all of our handicap accessible amenities. And that's the goal. That park is almost totally inclusive except for that parking lot. Right. That's the larger parking lot. Yeah. So, um, Joe, yes, if you'll get that pre-quoted with, you'll pro you know, you can meet out there, you'll know the cuts we need. Yeah, it's something we do in house. Uh, oh, you do it in house. Okay, so yeah, just, we have that machine. Just the cost of the house was really high. Okay, so then I'll just need an updated quote. Yeah. Okay. Is that the stuff they only do certain times of the year? Yeah, that's like August yeah. thing because it's mixed with lime, so it stands out like you made Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. You can give me yeah. information about that, Joe, for the grant, so I can explain what what we're looking at and when we be doing it. Good. Thank you, Rob. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. No problem. Next. Number two. Number two is a resolution um, by the Planning Board of Board Trustees to authorize payment to New Year Roofs for installation um, and production costs of the 2019 Sensory Garden for Alpine Park, not to exceed 2455 on Fund 01B02. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. This is just some of the um, replacements and plants we lost over the winter. Some of our wood um, platform. Walking pegs are, are rotting after three years. It's just time to replace them with some upgrades and um, piece together kind of a more permanent look to it and, and so on and so forth. Anything else? Roll call. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Thank you. And number three is a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees to authorize and approve payment for um, surfacing for my splash pad at the Veterans Park. For the splash pad, not to exceed $10,350 from fund O1F O2A with half of the amount of $51.75 due now and the balance due upon the completion. Also, uh, I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. So, I'll, I'll second it. only been in a year, right? Yeah. Yes. Well, this is actually putting in that soft padding that we have to the edge. To the edge. Uh, we thought, you know, when it was first installed and we had budgeted for it, but we thought, let's see how the first year goes, mm -hmm. see if it's needed. It's so popular, and we have so many kids that without it, we have a slip, trip, and fall hazard. Which would have been identified as part of the Otarma. Yep, and it was. When we had Otarma come in, and they look at those areas, and they check out the playground, it was highly recommended that we spread that out further as a safety precaution. So. Actually, Joe, Eric, and I met John out there to kind of walk through it. I believe it was late last fall, um, and then look at the idea of, of Expanding, expanding that it. to, to, to prevent some of those issues that we kind of encountered, especially if you think about August and September, how busy it was leading yeah. into Labor Day. It got it got a little. Yeah, dicey. What about that little corner area as you come off the sidewalk? It got extra muddy right there. That's right. Talked about so is that we've actually taken our um, aerator out. We've aerated, um, seeded, and topsoiled over it. Okay. Um, we're going to see what that does. Uh, there's also different options that, you know, Al and I were talking for different reasons and we found different things. Um, there's some, there's some uh, landscape curbing we can put in there and stuff to protect that as well. well. We'll figure out what we need as we see what takes or doesn't take. Yeah, because that water weeks. just overflows and from the kids mm -hmm. running that area and never took much or hitting it. What do you do, Philip? I didn't mean, talk about that today. Just close it down, but if, if you can't get that to grow, some type of a, a little artificial turf. Because he had a hard time with that last year. He did everything he could to just get it. Here would be my here would be my only question. I think it's a good I think no. it's a good idea. I'm not sure. But depending upon where that slope and the flow of the water is, if it if we I think we have to fix that if that's contributing to that because otherwise even the turf underneath there if it gets soft underneath there. You see it. That's what I'm you know, at least yeah. on initial. Yeah. 
thought. See, when it opened, that grass hadn't taken right That's there. true. It so wasn't ready. So hopefully ready, right. the grass is going to take yeah. it. It's a non-issue. That's true. It, wasn't, it really was kind of new and it really yeah. had a chance. Yeah. And now that he, you just planted it, right? We did it. We can have to go? Yeah, it's going to yeah. probably come up pretty thick. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. That's, That's a good easy. point, though, because we have trouble with that. Yeah. We're going to keep it on. Yeah. Get that yeah. you know, going before And just season. to point out, and I know you okay. know this, the funding for this, of course, is, is set aside from an improvement of sites from the general fund. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Hollis? Yes. Thank you. And finally, just a reminder to all that we are having our second Levy Town Hall at your Plain Township Hall uh, next Tuesday the 16th from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, we'll do a um, brief presentation of, of the nuts and bolts of the levy and the whys, and uh, we'll certainly be here to answer <coughs> questions and concerns along the way and uh, share yeah. ideas with you. So you going to do your PowerPoint again? I am. That's all you want to do. Yep, I am. That's all awesome. That's what there's a good I don't know if it's going to turn out. Well, I think we got a couple things going for us and that's that special edition is out so that's you know that, that 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 may answer a lot of questions but if you have those that, we're going to get some people that are just going to want to come in and share sure, their sure. feelings on the levy uh, but uh, obviously our goal is to get the information out make sure it's accurate and uh, then uh, let them decide yeah. And that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, nothing from the law director. No communications. Uh, this is the portion of the meeting where if there's anybody in the audience that wishes to address the board, please feel free to do so at this time. Seeing none. Uh, I would like to extend my gratitude uh, to the road you, department. Would you please be so kind as to give your name and address for uh, Eric Haynes, Plain Township. 2600 Easton. Thank you. Now, I do want to thank Road. Road uh, they helped us out down at the uh, yard waste facility. We had a couple uh, people try to get by our surveillance cameras last year, illegally dumping. So we placed a speed bump down there. So we're slowing the traffic ingress and egress out. That's obviously something that they were able to handle in about a two-hour period. So appreciate that. Good. Thank you. Lisa paid for it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so really, you should be thanking. Well, me. it's always yeah. appreciated. You can start again. <laughs> I, know you, I know you feel it, Rebo. Just play the tape. You'll be all right. Jessica, for the papers, say. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then we will go to concerns of trustees. Trustee Hawks. And then the first thing I have is a strong update, but because it's keeping my memory. You guys not updated the last meeting on the tax incentive review council. No, you sent us some in the meeting. Okay. Um, Just for the sake yeah. of public record, I had attended as our designated representative of the tax incentive review council. Um, we had the one one Eastern Plaza, which Correct. is you know, Oakwood Square back here, and then we had um, one of the hotels up on the hill. Mm -hmm. Essentially both are in excess of their capital investments required and total payroll, um, essentially what they looked at, I think on the hotels, was there were some full-time, part-time job numbers that the part-time numbers, how they were classified, the Tax Incentive Review Council looked at them as, well, throughout the, throughout the entire year. The business looked at it from the aspect of, well, we've had those number of heads here, but because of the churn, the nature of the industry plus the economy, um, the Tax Incentive Review Council essentially acquiesced it because the payroll number was in excess of what was set, regardless of the number of jobs, they were good. They were good. Um, the investment back here on the plaza is significantly in excess of what was originally agreed to. Um, what we're going to look at as far as for numbers reporting and jobs is going to be uh, a review on each new business that comes in. So when Slack Pack opens, when Anytime Fitness opens, and some additional infill, they'll, they'll subcategorize or break those down, but um, well, well ahead of. So 
considered those agreements will continue to be honored by no, uh, That's good. nothing major headed into next year. So I'll digress from that back to my initial point. Um, our Chicago update, we had our first meeting for the year <coughs> today. And a um, couple, couple things we talk, talked about. Countywide CAD update, they're looking at some server upgrades to accommodate sto storage, growing storage needs, as well as the ability to improve some of the operability um, functions. So I said April 24th is going to be the next CAD committee meeting. Um, the county radio system update, I thought was pretty impressive. When they originally forecasted this system down the month, the folks in Columbus in March, figuring out 2,000 users, and the sheriff reported to date, this doesn't have everything active. There's 3,300 radios activated to date. Um, their project overall has been done on time. They come in under budget. They attribute that to Daryl Anderson that they brought in from the outside. They, George, to his point, used the example of Summit County. They started almost a year ago, and they're still this process. Um, they're going to give the final thumbs up of, you know, under, bu under budget, you know, once we get through Hall of Fame weekend, because that's going to be peak use and stress on, this, on the system. So once they get past that, they'll determine if there's any tweaks and adjustments that need made. Um, from the stats, I think, Chief, you get, John, sorry, Chief, um, you can appreciate this. There's up to 50 daily push to talk with no knockoffs on, on the system. So, of the users out there, I mean, somebody's fighting that 50,000 uh, 50, times a day, daily, and they're not getting, knocked, not getting knocked off. So, Minerva was the first area that put it back at the fly and the corner yards and being more rural. There was concerns, but everybody's been pretty happy, so that was the update there. Um, the crime crime lab, we're actually going to have a special tour tomorrow evening with uh, mostly active and a couple associate members. But the crime lab's annual report, um, they saw about a 7.8% increase from 2017. And then there's just some interesting numbers I wanted to share real quick because it really had to do with um, their, their, more so their drug, their drug analysis. They were talking about the most frequently identified drugs in 2018. Um, marijuana, they saw a 59% increase in you know, its identification. Methamphetamines, there was a 95% increase. THC, there was a 77% increase. And then something that was just simply listed as non controlled, that was like the catch all bucket. It was explained 90%. Um, we can go to opiates and opioids identified in 2018. There was a, from 2017 to 2018, there was 141% increase. Um, and for the number of cases, it goes from 17 to 41. But, you know, even just as numbers and without the percentage, I mean, it's crazy, especially with what these guys are dealing with out on the streets, whether it's Share whether it's a fire, EMS guys are responding. Um, then, actually, the highest number, which was you know going from one case to four k four cases, is cyclopropyl fentanyl and hydrocodone. Both of those saw three hundred percent increases. So, I mean, some of the some of the trending, at least in their testing down there. I mean, they're seeing these types of increases in the cases. So it's here, it's what you know, these guys are having to deal with out on the streets. But outside the crime lab report, um, I'm going to bring that, bring this back. And we'll ultimately probably need to have Chris Nichols in here um, at one of our meet, meetings or maybe work session. But we got into talking about the SCOG funding agreement update. And essentially, it's been done in 10-year mm -hmm. cycles. Well, right now, there's talk with how the timing of the census
consensus is in how these new 10-year windows would be in order to get ourselves aligned with census data, essentially just doing a three-year extension of the current formula so we can get it to coincide with census. And this will actually help create and ensure equity for all parties in which, what you're paying because there's some that feel they're paying a little more than they, they should should be based upon you know, census numbers in, in use. Um, ultimately, it's going to require uh, formal board acceptance by a majority of the communities. Should say the Greater Stark County and all the entities not continue this formula, it goes back to a very, these were the exact terms that were used, a very archaic formula that is not conducive or beneficial to the county, the dog, or anything. So, knowing this is extremely high level, it's probably, I've made it just clear as muddy water for you. That's why we need to have Chris Nichols um, come in at a certain point, but their SCOG's going to contract with uh, Brickler and Eckler um, to come in and do some assessments and reviews and deter determinations on how best to proceed forward with this. But those were the primary things. Didn't we have that happen one other time? Wasn't there a time when there were a couple communities that didn't pay their share? And that, I believe so, John. That, that, brings that about complicated to me. some it things because yeah. there were some things, I know from a fire service mm -hmm. standpoint, that they couldn't get because yeah. they didn't pay their scog fee. Mm -hmm. and I can't remember what that I was. Kind of that. Now, I mean, that's been a while ago. Yeah. I'm guessing over 13 years yeah. ago yeah. about that. So, yeah, yeah. I would imagine they. Yeah, so that, that is. Yeah, the, the point. easy way is to just pay yeah. your fee. Right. You know, whatever benefits you're going to get from it, you're in the program. Um, that, I'm sorry, we finished. No, 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 no. Uh, that um, report also, and this just hit me because I was thinking, uh, when you were talking about radios and user fees and all that, uh, I wonder how much time we have. Chuck, I hate to put you on the spot, but our user fees, how much time do we have left? I know the county commissioners oh, yeah. came up with some extra money, yeah. and I'm thinking if maybe if we work collectively through SCOG or whatever with the users that are on the system and just pound our state legislatures about put some more money in that state level to distribute back out for user fees, because at one point in time they were paying all the user fees. Well, now's the time to do it because they're preparing they're that. that right now. The capital budget. So, so I, I just thought of that. So, you know, maybe we can work with, you know, all the users, whatever, the sheriff. And Actually, and they did bring know. that up, John. Um, the, county, the county commissioners, the sheriff, there were one or two other entities that they con made contact with all of the legislators. Yeah. And, it would be nice if um, our community, if we could do a joint letter with the sheriff, the sure. commissioners, whoever, I mean, I know us and the sheriff can get done quickly, but that, that's a good idea. Yeah. All right, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. So those are the primary okay. Anything else? Thanks, Scott. Yeah. Um, that takes us to the approval of the minutes for March 26th, and I will um, make a motion to approve the minutes of the March 26th, 2019 meeting. Second. Moved and seconded discussion. Roll call. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. And that we do have a need for an executive session, be it hereby resolved by the Pine Touch Board of Trustees, Stark County, Ohio, to adjourn to executive session at 6.49 p.m. Uh, from this regular meeting of April 9th is authorized under Ohio Revised Code 121.22b for the purpose of consideration of 1A, appointment of a public employee or official, 1B, employment of a public employee or official, 1F, compensation of a public employee or official, and number three, a conference with the law director or other retained counsel concerning pending or imminent court action. Second. Moved and seconded discussion. Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. 